Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. First, I should thank the owner of Goranga Hall. This hall is called Goranga Hall. It's a very good name. Goranga means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the combined avatar of Radha and Krishna. So every time you go past, you see Goranga Hall. Whether, whether you know or whether you don't, just by thinking that name Goranga, you get so much benefit. So the proprietor of this hall is Goranga Krishna, but in the, in the stewardship of Sri Ranganath Prasad Prabhu, who's standing here, so we thank him for making this facility available. It's a very good idea. You make some facilities where devotionally inclined students can stay and also facility for our devotees who are kindly uh, staying here and seeing to the spiritual needs of the students here. So, thank you very much for providing that. Hare Krishna. It's a good plan. You get a little profit from the rent and give some free to the devotees for using. I've been asked to speak on a message to the youth of India. <coughs> Well, the message is very simple. Chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare. Okay, that's it. Anything else? Well, there's a lot. First thing we should consider is why should we even need to tell you to chant Hare Krishna? Basically, everyone in Bharata now the name is preferred Bharata. <coughs> that culture was there that everyone would do it, but that culture isn't there now. <coughs> now you've all been studying, well, almost all your life, right? As, as, as soon as you can walk and talk, they stick you in a kindergarten and then you get Education, LKG, UKG, and then school, and then secondary school, now college, university. But no one tells you to chant Hare Krishna, is it? Any education about that? You're studying engineering, the idea is to get a job, right? Did anyone ever discuss or tell you why? Why should you get a job? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? So you can get some money. Oh, okay, you get some money. And then, what, then what you do? You can live. You can eat idlis. <coughs> and if you have a good job, you can have a good toilet to poop out the idlis the next morning. <coughs> First class toilet. <coughs> With air conditioning, of course. Okay, so you eat idlis and you poop it out the rest of your life in an air-conditioned toilet because you're earning more money from having a VIT degree than, of course, if you get a job. You might end up selling plastic brushes on the side of the street, which is what a lot of <coughs> graduates do. Maybe not VIT graduates, but other graduates. <coughs> but anyway, one way or another, you go through your life. <coughs> of course, there are other things that you do apart from pooping, but... Uh, <coughs> more or less, it's the same for everyone. Whether, whether you're rich or poor or in between, I guess most of you are in the in-between category, isn't it? You're not from a very rich background, not from a very poor background. Rich, poor, in between, you live your life, 
you eat something, whether you have a lot of money or a little money, you get to eat something every day by the grace of God. Most people get to eat something every day. And then you die. And then what? No one teaches you. No one teaches you. That's the first thing that Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita. Does anyone happen to know what that first teaching is in Bhagavad Gita? Dehino smin yata dehe kovarang yovadang jaratata dehantara pratihi dhiras tatra namohyati. Krishna uses in this verse the word dehi. You've all heard the word deha. It means body. Dehi, you don't hear that word very often. It means uh, the one who's connected to the body. Like yoga yogi, bhoga bhogi. So that means the soul. So Krishna here points out that everyone gets born. That's in Bhagavad Gita. Jatasya, Dhruvang Janma Vritasya Cha. Everyone who's died gets born. And everyone who's born dies. So you get born, then you're a little kid, then, you're a, then you become a, a bigger kid, then you become an adult, but actually most people, their consciousness never really goes beyond childhood consciousness, because in childhood we don't know what the goal of life is. When we grow up, we don't know what the goal of life is. And then Krishna says, we die. But Krishna uses the word dehantara prapti. You can understand. Deha body, anta means another, different, prapti. So we get another body. And Krishna says, it's very easy a Sanskrit. You can understand it very easily. Dhiraha, someone who's steady minded. Tatra. Tatra in this connection means, yeah, in this connection. Dhiras tatra na muhyati means is not mohit, is not bewildered. So someone <coughs> who is of dhira, steady intelligence, they're not bewildered by this change of body. So everyone has to die. No one teaches, but we all know. But we don't think about it. What, what are we doing? What are we doing in this life? We're eating, we're sleeping. What are we doing? What's going on? What happens after death? <coughs> if we believe what we're taught in the science classes, <coughs> That's it, finished. Death, what does it mean? Well, according to, it's not directly stated, but according to what's taught is that <coughs> life is a combination of chemicals. A long time ago, there was a lot of bubbling going on in the universe and different kinds of rays zapping the chemicals, which somehow, by a miracle, turned into life. Chemicals turned into life. Did you ever do any experiment at school? Turning chemicals into life? What, what kind of experiment? I remember basic chemistry. Where you. You heat hydrogen, you have to believe that this is hydrogen and then it's burned in an atmosphere where there's oxygen and condensed and you get water. Okay, very simple. Burn magnesium, what do you get? 
you get pshh, big bright white light, and then you get some powder magnesium oxide. Okay. <coughs> Simple experiment. Did it, anyone ever show you an experiment how to make a how to make a blade of grass in the laboratory? How to make a mosquito in the laboratory? How to make a single-celled organism in the laboratory? No. But somehow we have to believe that all the chemicals came together and formed life. <coughs> when, when I was at school in the biology class, they taught that simple cells in the body Ah, they're, they're very simple and soon we'll be able to produce them in the laboratory. Sometime later I found out that they made more discovery. It's not as simple as they thought. Even the most simple biological cell is extremely complex. And they have no idea how it could come about by evolution. Of course they say that well, it happened because of this and that, and then it responded to this and that, and it came into being. But, <coughs> practically in science, they can't even define what life is. You can define by the symptoms. But what exactly is it? <coughs> that's the first thing that's taught in Bhagavad Gita, but it's not taught in the schools. So practically all the education you're being given is being, it's an education in how to spoil your life. You might think that's an outrageous statement because VIT gives you a great opportunity. You can get a good job. <coughs> Which means you can earn enough money to have an air-conditioned toilet. Among other things, among other, it's not only an air-conditioned toilet, but, but it's, it's better than pooping in the field, so they say. Now this idea is being propagated that life is simply a combination of chemicals and therefore when you die, it's all over. Nothing. Finished. <coughs> it's, only, it's just chemicals, that's all. <coughs> then why should you bother working so hard? Our life is just a short... How many years? 60, 70, 80, of course. You might not make it till tomorrow morning. I'm not cursing anyone, I'm just speaking a fact that we don't know. <coughs> but for sure, you're not going to live to be 200. 100? Not very likely. 90? Maybe but not very long. It's just in time, even if you live to be a thousand years, it's just a blip in time. So why? Why bother? Why bother working so hard? You could just, anyway you might end up selling plastic brushes on, this, on the side of the street. If you sell plastic brushes on the side of the street, no anxiety. You'll sell some, then you don't have to pay taxes, you don't have to work hard so much, so much anxiety, will you lose your job? So what is our message to the youth of India? Sell plastic brushes on the side of the street. No, that's not the message. The message is Utishta Jagrata Prapya Virang Nibodhata Utishta you can understand it. Jagrata. Prapya varan means 
prapya means that which is available. Varan means vara, means the boon which is available, nibodhata, become aware of it. At least we should become aware of the actual purpose of human life. We understand from the Vedic literature that human life is it is attained after many, many births. <clears throat> now, that there is rebirth is a basic understanding of Vedic instruction. And it's not just, you could say, a Hindu belief. But even there's so much evidence for it now. It's be, even in the Western world, among the hard, hardcore scientific community, they're gradually, what's happening is that gradually younger people who are taking to hard science in the Western world are gradually becoming open to the idea that there is a spiritual dimension because there's so much evidence for it. There's so much evidence for reincarnation. There's so much evidence of near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, which are not explainable in physicalist terms, in terms of chemistry, biology, physics. There is another dimension. This is already understood in the Vedic knowledge and it's understood that spiritual life is more important than material life. This should be the, the message to the youth of India. Actually, it should be the message to everyone. But it's expected that those who have taken birth in this country will be more aware of this and open to this. We get born in different situations according to our karma. If you want to go to America, it's becoming less and less attractive to go to America. But if you want to go to America, you can go. If you really desire it enough, you could go. You might have to take another birth and get born there. And you might get born as a pig or a dog in America. But if you desire strongly enough, you can get born in America. Some people are born in America, some are born in India, some are born in Pakistan. We get born in different situations according to our previous desires and our previous actions. Karmana daivanaitrena jantur deho papataye. Srimad Bhagavatam states that according to our previous activities, under the supervision of the Supreme Lord, we get born in different situations. So many who in previous lives had spiritual knowledge, had spiritual inclination, they are born in this land because the culture here is supportive of that. <clears throat> so it's a great opportunity. So the message is Utishta Jagrata Prapya Varang Nibodhata. Become aware. First thing is we should become aware of the opportunity of human life. What is the opportunity to develop spiritual knowledge, to act on that knowledge, and to become free from birth and death? Repeated birth and death. Punar api jananam, punar api maranam, punar api janani jathare shayanam. We should be aware of this. It's not good. There is an illusion in youth. Usually in youth, 
the body is healthy, strong, good looking, we feel some hopefulness. But as life wears on, the body gets worn out. <coughs> this body, there is one term, Sharira Vyadhi Mandiram. The body is the very temple or the very place of disease. That is the nature of this world. There is an illusion in youth especially of happiness. But not everyone. A lot of very unhappy people in youth. And that's increasing as the pressure increases on youth. Uh, in so many cases of uh, suicide and mental disturbance. I first came to India in 1976. There were no psychologists in India at the time. The psychology was... Cancer was unheard of also. There was no cancer and no psychology. Cancer there might have been, but very rare. There were no cancer hospitals, nothing. So psychology, why people are so much uh, suffering, <coughs> mental suffering, so much pressure to do something which inherently, intrinsically, we can understand that if I become rich and so-called successful, it's not going to satisfy my soul. <coughs> so be aware. That's the first thing. Be aware. This life is meant not for simply working hard and getting money. But you should understand. Human life is meant for God-realization. to understand God. Who is God? Who is God? Anyone? Do we have any gods here? Anyone God? Anyone like to tell me they're God? We get some people preaching, everyone is God. You are God. Is it true? Are you God? God means supreme. Some people preach like that. You are all God. It's, a, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Here I am, struggling just to get through every day, full of anxiety, and some say, you are God. <laughs> There's a great misleading in Hinduism, this idea that everyone is God. Another great misleading is that there is no God. Both, both ideas are wrong. We should know who is God. This is Atma Sakshatka. Self-realization means first of all to understand who I am, to understand who is God. God means supreme. You are not supreme. I am not supreme. Who is supreme? That we will have to find out from the Vedic literature. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satid Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. This is one of the several summaries in the Vedic literature describing who is God. Ishvara Parama Krishna. The Supreme Controller is Krishna. He has a specific name. Some people say God has, God has no name. Why? Why? Who are you to say God has no name? <laughs> oh, I, I think that God should have no name. Who are you to say what God should be like? He has unlimited names because he has unlimited forms, qualities, leelas. But the one name which summarizes everything is Krishna. Krishna means 
all attractive. Another thing, they say, God has no form. You've all heard this, right? God has no form. But he has form, no material form. Satchit Ananda Vigraha. His body is fully spiritual. We all have a form. This is a form. It is Asat, Achit, Nirananda. Asat means it won't last. It's not eternal. Krishna's form is eternal. It's Achit. The body in and of itself has no consciousness. Consciousness is only as long as the Atma is in the body. But Krishna's form is fully conscious and fully spiritual. And Ananda, this body, we think we can get some pleasure out of it. But there's no real pleasure. But Krishna's form is full of spiritual bliss. <clears throat> Krishna is the origin of everything. There is no origin of Krishna. His another name is Govinda. He who gives pleasure to the senses, to the cows, to the earth. He is the cause of all causes. So the message to you is that whatever you do in your life, don't waste this opportunity. Use this human form of life, not simply for living, working, dying. Cultivate your spiritual consciousness, which means ultimately Krishna consciousness. Prepare so that you don't have to get born again. That should be the proper utilization of life. Now you are young. We may die at any time, but it's expected that you will live to be 70, 80, something like that. So some time is there. You can cultivate Cultivate your spiritual consciousness. In this age, it's not possible to go to the forest and meditate. There are hardly any forests left. And even if you go, some contractor will come and bulldoze it all down. And we can't meditate. The, the, what goes on in the name of meditation nowadays is just farcical. People sit. And they can't keep their mind steady even for five seconds. So this is all nonsense, this so-called meditation. We can't do any austerities as previously. Now you've all grown up with air conditioning and electric fans and people can't live without this. Where's the austerity? But you can chant Hare Krishna. This is the special mercy of Gauranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's propagated that. For people in Kali Yoga, chant Hare Krishna. This is, that was the message, right? At the beginning, chant Hare Krishna. So we're coming back to that again. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kivalam. Kalo na streva na streva na streva gatiranyata. In this Kali Yuga, there's no other way, no other way, no other way to reach the supreme spiritual goal. There's only this way. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama. The name of Krishna. So that's our message to you. Chant Hare Krishna. There's a great philosophy behind it. The Vedic philosophy, there's no comparison in the world to this philosophy which comes down through the Vedas. <clears throat> it is the exposition of reality. It's not speculation. It's fact. Veda means knowledge. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Vaidaisya Saraveraham Eva Vedaha. The ultimate point of knowledge 
in all the Vedas is to know Krishna. So that's our message to you very simply. Opening message. Chant Hare Krishna. Understand why we should chant Hare Krishna. Go on chanting Hare Krishna throughout your life. And live your life in such a way that you don't get born again. But you can give up this body remembering Krishna. Then you can go to Krishna. Then no more birth. I think many of you are already on this path or you're taking some steps like that, is it? Some of you are coming here regularly, is it? Chanting Hare Krishna. All right. Well, I gave you an overview of why you should do it. Very simply, if anyone has any question about this, you can please ask. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, what are the symptoms that can help us to distinguish between happiness of the soul and happiness of the senses? What is the difference between happiness of the soul and happiness of the senses? How can we distinguish? <clears throat> ah, it's not very difficult. Happiness of the soul comes from doing everything for Krishna. Happiness of the senses means we do it for our own personal pleasure. Krishnarte Akila Cheshta. Everything done for the pleasure of Krishna. So in everything we do, we think, is this going to please Krishna or not? Am I doing this for my own egoistic, mistaken, Pleasure or am I doing it for Krishna's pleasure? It's a matter of attitude, that's all. There are certain things to do also. There are certain rules which Krishna has given. If we follow, we know it's pleasing to Krishna. If we don't follow, we know it's, it's not pleasing to Krishna. For instance, we should take those who are seriously on the path of Krishna consciousness. They will only eat food offered to Krishna. So if we follow that, we know that's pleasing to Krishna. And if we don't follow, it's only for our own sense enjoyment. So follow the rules and always think, how can I please Krishna? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. In environments where it's not easy to do our chanting... Sorry, could you start again? In environment where it's not easy to chant, where we're in a materialistic place, how can we still do our chanting nicely, properly? Yeah, that's a big problem of students in the hostel, isn't it? In materialistic environment. Well, you must have discussed this among yourselves many times, but still it remains a problem because you're still asking the question. <clears throat> you have to try and do the best you can, that's all. And if we're sincere, Krishna will appreciate. He will appreciate that sincere endeavor. There are worse situations. There's one book was written by one devotee in Russia during the communist era. He was imprisoned. There were several devotees imprisoned for chanting Hare Krishna. Yeah, it's called salted bread. So it describes how he was tortured for chanting Hare Krishna. But still he went on chanting. So you can take inspiration from that. It's a very inspirational book. He died eventually. He was just about to get released because he was so sick, he was almost dead. So they wanted to release him, but he died before they could release him. Because he wouldn't eat their food and so many things. It was sub-zero temperatures. They would beat him, but he just went on chanting Hare Krishna. So, however bad your situation is, 
you can always think it could be worse. So let me go on chanting. Prahlad Maharaj is a great inspiration. How he went on chanting, despite being tortured. So we can remember that. It takes determination to be Krishna conscious in a materialistic environment. No doubt. It goes against the grain of society. So it can be difficult. <coughs> That's true. Chanting Hare Krishna is easy. Just you have to open your mouth. But there may be so many difficulties we encounter. But then we have to think that why am I doing this? Just like to get your degree, there are so many difficulties you have to undergo. Despite offering facilities, above average facilities for you to live, still if you're going to get your degree you have to work, you have to study. It's not easy. Why do you do that? Well, the idea is that if I take difficulty now, then I'll get a better opportunity in the future. I should get a good job, what they call a good job. So the same thing, it may be difficult now to chant Hare Krishna. But then you think that this is my investment for a better life. A better life even in this life. Because if we are Krishna conscious in this life, we don't become so disturbed by the ups and downs of life in this world. And in this world, there are a lot more downs than ups. <laughs> it's a, as you get older, it becomes more and more. For all the facilities offered in VIT, there are so many difficulties also, living among so many people. And I assure you, once you get out into the workplace, it gets worse. It's not going to get better. Life is tough in the modern world. It's getting tougher. But if we're Krishna conscious, that helps us even in this life to face all the difficulties that we must face living in this world. And we are assured of future, eternal, happy existence in this spiritual world. So it's worth taking the difficulty, we should think. Yeah, any other question? There's, there's a hand over there also, next. You please ask. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. My question is that, what are the offenses we should not commit while chanting Hare Krishna Mahamant? What are the offenses we shouldn't commit? Well, first of all, commit to chant Hare Krishna. That's the first thing. If you're already thinking how to avoid offenses, you're already doing pretty good. You're already ahead of the others. Here in this session, we're mostly trying to convince everyone to regularly chant. <clears throat> How to do so better and better, that becomes the next question. But first of all, you chant. <clears throat> yeah, so there was another... Someone, please, here. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, you mentioned that uh, it's quite difficult to, uh, you know, maintain focus while you're meditating. Like, even I tried meditation and it feels chaotic inside my mind. How should I... Why, why is it chaotic? Why does it feel chaotic inside your mind? Because it is chaotic inside your mind. It's a big chaos down there. If you stop to, if you stop to look at it, you'll realize what a mess it is. 
Why is that? Hoya mayar das kari nana obhilash. Now we are servants of Maya and we have so many desires in our minds. And every time we go in the street, every time we look at our phone, there's something trying to give more desires. Is it not? So many advertisements. You just want to look up how to go from A to B and in the meantime there are 25 different people all trying to tell you something. <coughs> there was a, there's, a, there's a song from the 1960s which I remember. It's, it was a famous song at the time by the Rolling Stones. Maybe you've heard of the Rolling Stones. If you haven't, you didn't miss anything. <coughs> but they were very fa they're still very famous in the Western world. So the song goes like this, something like this. When I'm driving in my car and a man comes on the radio telling me more and more about some useless information supposed to inspire my imagination, I can't get no satisfaction. So that's it. We're bombarded by so many things, all the time. <coughs> the mind is chaotic. So if we just try to all of a sudden stop it, it's not going to work. There's another process. Bhaja hure mana sri nanda nandana. That worship nanda nandana, Krishna. The mind can be put onto Krishna. We can think of Krishna. That's a better process. That's practical meditation for the modern age. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, my question is like, uh, what is dharma? Because we say uh, we are following dharma, we are dharmic. So is it following shastras? You say you are following dharma and you are dharmic? No, no, no. Yeah. So like, what what's the, the, what's the essence? What are the four principles of dharma? You don't know. That's what I'm asking is you're what is... You're following dharma, but you don't know what it is. I'm saying in general terms, we say that yeah, uh, yeah. we are following dharma. In America, what is dharma? 19, about 1966, one hippie asked Prabhupada, well, uh, I'm following Vedanta, he said. And Prabhupada said, really? You know what Vedanta is? Do you know the first sutra of the Vedanta sutras? He had no idea. Anyone here know the first sutra of the Vedanta Sutras? It's what I've been talking about here. Atato Brahma Jignasa. Now we have the human form of life. We should inquire into the nature of Brahma, spiritual reality. That's Vedanta, beginning of Vedanta. So what is Dharma? Dharmang tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. Simply put, Dharma means that which is given by Bhagavan. The four principles of Dharma for practicing Dharma in this world are cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. This is for worldly Dharma. It's the whole... Bhagavad Gita, although it's short and it's in simple language, but there are many important themes. From one perspective you can say it's all about dharma, because Arjuna was afraid that by fighting he would be a dharmic. He would go against dharma. How can I fight? How can I attack? My gurus, Bhishma, Drona. <coughs> he would, but then he realized <coughs> his position. Dharma samura chetaha. I'm confused about dharma. So he asked Krishna to instruct him. 
Nowadays the word dharma has been changed from the original meaning. So we talk about Hindu dharma, Christian dharma, but actually dharma, it has various meanings. The Sanskrit root is drit, drit that, which, that which sustains. So that which is sustains or that which is intrinsic to our existence. As jivas, it's intrinsic to our existence to serve Krishna. So ultimately, dharma means to serve Krishna. Otherwise, garv se kaho ham hindu hai, lekin shastra mein kya, kya, kya hai mujhe kuch bhi jang kari nahi hai. What is this? What's the meaning? In that sense, the Muslims and the Christians are better because at least they teach their children the Quran or the Bible. Is it? If, if we start to teach you Bhagavad Gita, your parents will become afraid. But dharma doesn't mean Christian dharma, Hindu dharma. This is a misuse of the word dharma. It's a, it's a very complex topic actually, which is why Bhagavad Gita was spoken. Because what, Krishna, what Arjuna said, I shouldn't fight. It's against dharma to fight. Actually at one level it was true. But then, on the, but then Krishna had to explain to him what ultimately dharma means. This is called dharma sankat, when there's clash of two possible lines of action. So it's a very complex topic. But ultimately Krishna says, sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharvam raja. If you're confused about what dharma is, don't worry. Just forget it all and just surrender to me. And that is the highest dharma of all. Yeah, then, anything else? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, sometimes we take uh, determination that we'll chant Hare Krishna from now regular, regularly. Speak sometimes uh, we have the determination that chant. from now on we'll chant Hare Krishna regularly. But then we go inside the campus and then the determination yeah. fades away. So yeah. how to bring that? How to overcome, yeah. Well, you have to make your determination strong, isn't it? See what... See how we're like little toy dolls pulled by string. We, we think, yes, I should chant Hare Krishna. Then again, we enter that materialistic atmosphere and immediately we forget. We're just like little dolls pulled around by Maya. So, we should become stronger. Otherwise, we become victimized. We have to think very seriously. What am I doing with my life? We don't realize how seriously bad the situation is. We're going to have to die and then again get born again and again and again and it's not good. Some serious suffering can be very helpful. Can be very if, if we know what the goal of life is, but we don't get this, that determination, Krishna might send us some serious suffering. And then we understand. In 1977, I was in Delhi. I had, just yesterday, was it you noticed here there was some, yeah, my whole arm was swollen up with a huge abscess. Yeah. So, 
I walked to the nearest government hospital where <coughs> I don't even think it was a doctor, just someone picked up a scalpel or something and cut it and all this junk came out. It didn't put no anesthetic, just cut it. It was extremely painful. All the so much pus and blood and bad things came out and he squeezed it out. So as I was walking back I felt like I was passing out from the pain. And then I thought, well, I'm getting this kind of pain life after life. One way or the other, I better become serious about Krishna consciousness. So that can be an incentive. You can pray to Krishna. Do what is required to... If we dare to, we can pray to Krishna. Please give me whatever is required so I can become serious. He's already giving it. But we don't wake up to it. So again, Utishta, Jagrata, wake up, become aware. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I want to know how can we relate to Krishna? Is he the energy that created us or is he the person that created He's us? He's the supreme energetic. He is the person. <coughs> there is Shakti and Shaktiman. He is Shaktiman, the Supreme Person. Created, these bodies are created by the material nature under Krishna's direction. Maya Dhyakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Under my supervision, Adhyaksha, it's the same word, Sanskrit, Adhyaksha, Adhi means above, uh, Aksha means vision, so Adhyaksha, super means above, vision, supervision. Under Krishna's supervision, <coughs> my Adhyakshena Prakriti, Suyate, Suyate means come into being, comes into being. Just like we have the word prasuti, means giving birth. You see the, the uh, hospital, they have the prasuti ghar for delivering babies. Suyate sacharacharam. Everything in this world, Krishna says, is brought into being by his prakriti, everything moving and non-moving. So the bodies are created by material nature under Krishna's direction. And we are eternal as Krishna is eternal. So Krishna doesn't create us, but we are eternally existent with Krishna. And we're eternally dependent upon Krishna. Just like the sun and the sunshine. The sunshine comes from the sun, so in that sense we are coming from Krishna. But still, the sun rays are eternally existing with the sun. That's a rough example. It's a great subject to know. You're all studying. Physics is the basis of engineering, I guess. So it's a great subject. There are so many things to learn and understand. If you get into theoretical physics, there's no end how complex it can become. But this knowledge of spiritual science, it is the highest Raja Vidya Raja Guhyam, Krishna says. It is the king of knowledge. But it's also Raja Guhya. It's also 
not so easy to understand. The basics are very simple. But if we get into it, we'll find there are so many complexities. The basic point to understand, Krishna is supreme. I am an eternal servant of Krishna. I am an eternal... Krishna is the supreme, eternal, spiritual being. I am also an eternal, spiritual being. Forgetting Krishna, we are suffering life after life. So we should utilize this life to develop spiritual knowledge, act on that knowledge, and become free from birth and death, and go to Krishna to live eternally, blissfully with Krishna. <coughs> Our guru, Srila Prabhupada, there are so many gurus, but Srila Prabhupada was a guru in the fullest and best sense of the term. Guru means one who gives spiritual knowledge. So he gave the best spiritual knowledge. And he gave this knowledge by translating Gita, Bhagavatam, and giving so many talks. And he gave this very uh, <coughs> deep spiritual knowledge in a language which even people coming from the Western countries like myself, we can understand and appreciate. So nowadays in Bharata, there is a lack of proper spiritual culture. Your forefathers grew up with spiritual culture. Nowadays you don't. The parents are supposed to teach spiritual knowledge, but they don't. And if they try to, they usually end up teaching all nonsense things because there are so many nonsense gurus. <coughs> but Srila Prabhupada was and is a pure devotee of Krishna and he gave pure spiritual knowledge. So please read his books. That will help you very much. As it's helping literally millions of people all over the world to understand their real spiritual position and their real goal of life. Hare Krishna. Anything else? All right. So thank you for coming and taking out one hour of your life. <coughs> We asked you to give your ears. You gave your ears very nicely. Thank you for that. What we're really looking for is to give your ears, your eyes, your nose, your tongue, your life. Bring Krishna into your life. That's what we're looking for. It's for your benefit, your ultimate benefit. <coughs>